Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Vetra Matt. Uh, this is a new, this is part one of like part, of a part seven limited time series I'm doing on this channel until Flash comes back November 16th. So enjoy this video. The first one I'm going to be talking about, which is in number 10, um, again, it's top 10. Number one will be last because it's top right of the list. Um, is Arrow 123, the season one finale. Um, the reason why it's in the top 10 is because it was a pretty damn good finale. I mean, it, it was better than... I think every finale in the show was phenomenal. Um, but the season 1 finale, having not watched the show until like season 6 of Arrow and binge-watching 1 through 6 to get caught up for 7 and 8, um, the season 1 finale always stuck with me because it was the first finale of the show. And Malcolm Merlin was the perfect villain to play for the first season, in my opinion. So, the finale really just struck different. Also, with um, Tommy's death, um, the Undertaking going on, and Oliver, you know, really dealing with his first actual loss as the Arrow, or the Hood, back in Star City. Obviously, he lost his father and several other people. Well, the five years he was away, but this was the first legit person he lost that was close to him. Um, and the harder thing was, it was kind of his fault because he didn't stop it. And he had to, he was supposed to, and he failed. So I, it really showed that in the finale, and I, it just stuck with me throughout the whole show while I was binge watching it. So, yeah. That's why it's in this list. Um... I don't think any other finales are because of that, but this is, season one finale is always going to be special to me, at least for the show, just because one, it was the first finale, and two, I think it really showed who Oliver is as a character, also, like, as Oliver as the Green Arrow now, um, or if the show was still on now, but, you know, when the show was still on, him being the Green Arrow and all that. Um, coming in number nine is Arrow 208, the Scientist, which is the first episode Barry Allen ever appeared in, which if Barry Allen didn't appear in that, The Flash wouldn't be a show. <laughs> I think we all know that. Um, we wouldn't have eight years coming up of The Flash. Well, it's seven, but eight seasons, I mean, of The Flash. Um, probably coming up on nine and ten, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised. Um... Again, Flash, Supergirl, Legends, all these shows... Well, Legends can go out the window, but... If, all the good Arrowverse shows, like Flash, Supergirl, and Stargirl, Superman, and Lois... They all came from Arrow. If Arrow didn't happen, none of these shows would be on. So, I think that's something everyone needs to look at. And, again, Flash wouldn't have been even a show if it didn't happen for... Um, Arrow in 208, when Barry Allen first appeared. Um, I don't remember the episode 100% to the teeth... But I just remember loving it because we got, like, pure Barry Allen in that. Just him being a complete nerd. And <laughs> just seeing the geekiness of Barry Allen before he was the Flash. Um, it's always something interesting to go back to watch now. And then watch the pilot. See how different he is when he gets powers and how he was before. Because we don't see that in the show. I think the only time we've seen that in the show was to... 18 or something, where Barry gave up his speed to save Wally's life. I mean, that was really the only time we've ever seen Barry without his speed. And even then, it wasn't really a good time because he lost everything. So, going back to 2-8 of Arrow, seeing Barry before he was a Flash, to how he is now even in the pilot of the show, is, in my opinion, I think the best way to look at Barry. Um, to see how much he's changed over the years... Not just Barry, but also Grant over the years being on Arrow for a few episodes and then on the show in general on Flash. Um, it's always interesting to go look at. And that's why it's number nine minutes because Barry's in it. <laughs> and it, it really was one of the best episodes of that season, which is saying a lot considering Slade, Slade Wilson was in it and season two was one of my favorite seasons of the show. Um, coming in number eight is 221 City of Blood. Um, now this was the episode, I believe, after Mora, Mora, whatever, however you say Oliver's mom's name, um, got killed by Slade Wilson. Um, this was pre-crisis, obviously, and post-crisis, she's alive because Oliver saved her. 
in this timeline, but in Pre-Crisis, Season 2, Arrow Time, she died by Slade, and Alvaro was willing to kill himself, or send himself to Slade so he could die, because that was Slade play, Slade's plan all the time, was to kill Oliver. Um, and him finding out about Sebastian Blood, and um, fighting the Maracruz soldiers at Blood's base um, of operations. It, it was just an overall amazing episode, and I think that was also the episode where Laurel used the bow and arrow to get herself out, or that was the next episode, but it was a cliffhanger for the next episode, and it, it, it was a really just amazing episode overall, especially with that heart-sinking opening scene with Oliver being broken after losing his mom, and being killed by Slade because he failed. Again, with the failing part. He fell in season one at the finale. Now he's failing again in season two. That that was... Again, it showed Oliver as a hero. It showed him that he still suffers human problems. Like loss, grief, all that. And he's dealing with that as Oliver Queen and the Arrow. I, I'm pretty sure it was the Arrow then. That was the Hood. The Hood or the Arrow. I, I think it was the Arrow then. I think he changed his season two... I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did. But or, uh, it was either season two or three. I'm pretty sure it was season three. I don't remember. But you know what I mean for those who watch the show. Um, but yeah. Um, the next episode uh, coming in number seven is 309, The Climb. Mid-season finale season three. Which is the main reason it's in this list. This is the best mid-season finale I think the show's ever had. I would honestly say either 509 is a close second to it, but 309 was one of the best mid-season finales the show's had. Um, just because of the cliffhanger we got of everyone thinking Oliver's dead, um, which he kind of was dead, honestly, so I think they even said he was, and he came back from the Lazarus Pit or whatever, but it, the fight between uh, Oliver and Roz and um, the scenes between Felicity and Oliver before Oliver left, and us finding out that Thea was the one that killed Sarah, and the trade that Oliver has to make to make sure that Thea doesn't get killed, you know, because of all that. So it it was very, it was a very good mid season finale. It was a very good episode overall for the season. Um, it definitely made me wondering because I was binge watching it on Netflix the whole series. And I got this episode, I was like, isn't there like six seasons at the point in time? There was six, now there's eight, obviously. But when I first binge watched it, I was like, is this the end of the show? Like, are they doing ten episodes? I I, I had legitimately had to check, because I wasn't sure. But it, it really left us thinking, is he dead? <laughs> and even for people who were just now binge watching it, probably had that going through the head the same way I did, um, watching it. So it was a very good mid-season finale for the show, um... And, yeah. Um, speaking of finales, come in number 6, 323. Uh, this is your sword. Um, it's a tidy episode. Um, the reason it's here is because the ending, leaving the season 4, with Oliver being happy, obviously, you know, changed over the years since then, but it really did feel like finale episode, with Oliver ending the storyline with Rise, saving the city several times over, and you know, having that whole interaction between Alvaro and Felicity, um, about them wanting to be with each other, but at the same time, he can't be the Arrow anymore because that identity is destroyed. He can't really be Oliver Queen because kind of destroyed, and the Hood is just, you know, assumed dead along with the Arrow. So, it, it's definitely... It, it was one of the best episodes of the season. It was one of the best finales of the series. Next to season 5, 6... And I would go as far as say eight minutes because it was a series finale, but you know what I mean. It, it felt like a series finale in 323. Um, especially because of the ending, but also because of just all the characters we got in it. We got Ray, Dig, Felicity, Laurel, Quentin, uh, Malcolm, Barry, even as the Flash helped up in the episode. We had the big bad in it ending that storyline. Nissa, Talia, I, well, maybe not Talia, but. We had all these characters from the whole season come back for this one episode. It very well could have been a finale. Who knows? <laughs> the show didn't get picked up. Um, but, yeah. Coming in, number five is 501, the season five premiere called Legacy. Um, I love this premiere. I love season five because of Prometheus. 
Um, but the opening scene, which was Oliver fighting uh, Anarchy, was just the best fight scene I think the show's ever had next to the Diaz fights and um, some slave fights as well. Any fight throughout the show is amazing, but I think this is one the higher up fighting fight scenes of the show in general. Um which is always interesting to see how they do that in the show. Um and then dealing with Moral's death post season four and having a statue of Moral for her and seeing Oliver really being the mayor, but also being the Green Arrow and how he's really shifting um in the premiere at least from being the mayor to being more of the Green Arrow and not really being the mayor at all. Um, obviously, that changed for season five because he got a new team, but that, you know, seeing that um, come about with Oliver was really good, I think, they did for the show in the premiere. Um, coming in number four is 801 Starling City, the season eight premiere. It was an amazing premiere. I love season eight so much because this premiere right here all the episodes in season 8 were amazing. I was used to the final season. Well, I mean, you know. I think we all know it's going to come back at one point for season 9. Just a limited time run. But, yeah, you know, you all know what I mean. But it was basically just revisiting all of season 1 stuff. Um, the only difference with this is Sun Earth 2. And everyone got a new suit. Dig, Oliver, and Laurel, they all got new suits, which is cool to see. Um, Tommy's a dark archer, and he was planning his own undertaking because Thea died when she was 18, which again was a uh, O to season one, I think, or season one or two, or before then, during the flashbacks, where Oliver saw Thea doing drugs and he got him off, got her off of it, um, before she could kill herself or get hurt. Um, obviously, Oliver wasn't there in this earth or timeline, so, you know, that's what that all happened about. Um, but seeing the interaction between Oliver and Tommy at this day and age, with Tommy also being the Dark Archer and finding out that Oliver is the Green Arrow, or the Hood, I guess, on that Earth, it's different now, probably, because Oliver calling himself the Green Arrow, but seeing that also go on was really cool to see. Also, Prometheus, Adrian Chase, being the Green Arrow of Earth 2 was really cool to see. Um, it was also really cool to see the interaction between Oliver and, uh, Chase because of his history with Chase on Earth-1. Again, at the point, Earth-1 is Earth-Prime now, but you know what I mean. Going through all that was just really cool to see in the premiere, and that's why it's as high up in the list as it is. Um, coming in number three, 618, Fundamentals. This is one of the best episodes I think this show's ever had. Um, mainly because it was just in, like... Diaz gave Oliver vertigo, which made him see pretty much anything that he feared. And seeing the interaction between him being pissed off at William and then Felicity and not trusting Felicity. And then just everyone abandoning him in his head. And in reality, Felicity didn't leave him. William's, you know, still a little upset at him, but he got better throughout the episode. Um... And seeing Chase come back for the episode was really good to see, which is why it's so high up in the list again. I love Chase as a villain of the show. Um, and just seeing that all fold into one big episode was really cool to see. Also, the fight scene at uh, SCPD, where Alvarez infiltrating the place to get to Diaz. Really amazing fight scene. Um... Again, the general episode was like a 10 out of 10 right there. <laughs> um, one of the best episodes of the show, honestly. Um, the next, coming in number two is 418, 1159, which is the episode where Laurel Lance died. Our Laurel died. Um, before she was replaced by Earth 2 Laurel in this timeline. Um, killed by Damien Dark. It, it was one of the most emotional episodes this show's ever had. And... It was actually patched the teeth, but um, the reason why it is number two on this list is because of Laurel's death and because it was so heartbreaking on all the characters that we saw throughout the whole season. Even in the season five, it was still heartbreaking for some of them. So it had a major impact on the show itself and also the characters itself throughout the entire show for the rest of the series. 
coming in number one is 806 Reset, um, the episode where they brought Quentin Lance back after he was dead for the past couple seasons before, um, and every time he would die, which would be a scenario every time, the timeline would be reset, and it, they would get a do-over, and Oliver and Laurel would get to say goodbye to Quentin, Oliver didn't want to, it took him an episode to get there, but... Every interaction with Quentin was amazing in the scene. Every scene in this episode was amazing. Um, it was like a 100 out of 10 episode right there. But it, it was really good to see Quentin again after so many seasons had gone by. I think it was season 6 he died. So we went through 22 episodes without Quentin plus half of season 8. So it was really good that they brought him back for that one special episode with it all being about Quentin and Oliver and Laurel. Which was needed. But not having, you know, Dig being in spotlight and if Felicity was in this episode, her being in spotlight, it was just Oliver, Quentin, and Laurel being in the spotlight, getting their goodbyes that they didn't get to have um, because they didn't want to say goodbye. They didn't know he would die. They were hoping he wouldn't. So it, it was good for the characters that they did that. It was one of the best episodes of the season. Um, honestly, the whole series, I know I said that a lot, but I really do mean it when I say it. Um, so, yeah. That's my top 10 episodes of Arrow. My top 10 favorite episodes of Arrow. Um, let me know what your favorite episode of Arrow is in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.